So last week, Qualcomm took the wraps off the Snapdragon 855, and I've got videos about it here on this channel, Gary Explains, and I've also got a video over at Android Authority. But after they announced the 855, Qualcomm also announced the Snapdragon 8CX, a, a new processor, but not designed for smartphones, but designed for laptops running Microsoft Windows. Hold on, what are you saying? A, a laptop running Windows that hasn't got an Intel or an AMD processor in it? What's all that about? Well, if you wanna find out more, please, let me explain. Okay, let's start with a bit of context. Now, ARM, when they design CPU cores, that's like the Cortex-A76, for example, they're designing the core in such a way that the power consumption, the, the amount of energy it uses, is much more important than the performance. Because ultimately, these chips are gonna go into smartphones, which come with a battery, maybe 2,500 milliamp hour battery or 3,000 milliamp hour battery, and you don't want the battery to go flat after just one hour. Now, at the other end, you've got people like, uh, companies like Intel and AMD who are making uh, kind of processors for desktops. And desktops might have, you know, mains power, a big cooling fan on it. And the difference between the two is quite uh, large. For example, when ARM design a processor, every single block inside that processor about the way the instructions are decoded, about the way the memory is accessed, about the way the cache is laid out, is designed in a way that let's do this the most power efficient way, and then let's see how fast we can make it, how much performance we can give it. Whereas at the other extreme, they're saying, it doesn't matter how much heat it gives, it doesn't matter how much power it uses, let's just make it as fast as possible. And so the difference is in a smartphone, you might have a uh, processor that uses about four and a half watts, okay? Whereas up in a typical desktop nowadays, we're talking about, what, 65 watts. There are some higher and there are some lower. Now you can imagine if you put a 65 watt processor in a smartphone, it would burn your hand, first of all, and secondly, of course, the battery would go flat in just an instant. Now, how do you bridge the gap between these two big differences? Well, the next thing up from a smartphone, of course, is a laptop. Now, Intel and AMD make processors that they bring down those power requirements to suit the much better needs of a laptop. And generally now you go down from 65 watts down to let's say 15 watts. Now at 15 watts, you get yourself, you know, your classic laptop, it's got a big battery in it, okay? And you'll get a number of hours of uh, battery life out of it. But wouldn't it be interesting if you took the processor technology that we have in smartphones and pushed it up to the level of laptops, and then rather than having just that small battery that you have in a smartphone, you have a big battery from a laptop, I wonder how many hours of battery life you'll get. Well, that's exactly what Qualcomm did when they had the first always connected PC running Windows ARM two years ago with the Snapdragon, um, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. Now, this was basically the same chip that you found uh, in the smartphones of the time, put straight into a laptop, and it produced amazing battery life. You were getting 20 hours or more of actual battery life. The problem was it was still the same performance as a smartphone. So although that was good, and a while it was actually usable, and you could kind of you know open up apps, and you could use Windows, and you could do things, it certainly wasn't as fast as, let's say, a high-performing uh, laptop. And so some people struggled with the performance of it. Now, of course, after that, we had the Snapdragon 845, and its companion processor for laptops was the Snapdragon 850. And again, it's the same idea. They basically took the 845, tweaked it slightly, it's got a slightly higher clock speed, and then they put that into laptops. And that was kind of the second generation of these uh, always on, always connected Windows uh, PCs running on an ARM processor, particularly an ARM processor from Qualcomm. But again, although it improved the performance because we had the increase from the 835 to the 845, it still wasn't really that kind of, you know, that level of performance that people were expecting from a laptop. Now, with the announcement of the Snapdragon 8CX, the X standing for Extreme, Qualcomm have gone back to the drawing board and said, hey, let's not just take one of our smartphone processors and kind of just tweak it slightly to make it uh, okay for a laptop. Let's take the same technology and design a new processor specifically for the laptop, sharing a lot of the technology, of course, and let's see whether we can really boost that laptop performance while still giving those hours and hours and hours of battery life because you've got a big battery, but the same kind of requirements as you would get 
from a smartphone. And that's what the Snapdragon 8 CX is. Now they're talking about it being kind of a seven watt. So in a smartphone, four, four and a half watts, maybe 15 watts from something like uh, Intel or AMD. And now in the uh, Snapdragon 8 CX, we're talking about seven watts, that kind of area. And so that's what it is. So it would be interesting now to see what Qualcomm did to make this more than just a Snapdragon mobile phone processor and make it ready for uh, laptops. So let's have a look at some of the differences. So if you look here at the uh, block diagram of a Snapdragon 8 CX, you'll see it looks very similar to that of a uh, Snapdragon 855. You've got a GPU, you've got the DSP, which also does AI stuff, you've got the CPU, you've got a Snapdragon X24 modem, so you've got the kind of the, uh, always on connected through LTE, you've got an ISP for image signal processing, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth. So in that sense, it is certainly a relative of the Snapdragon 855. However, you'll notice here that we've now got the Adreno 680 GPU and the Cryo 495 CPU. So starting with the new Adreno, what they've actually done is they've made this GPU twice as fast as the GPU inside of the Snapdragon 845. In fact, it's 3.5 times faster than the GPU in the Snapdragon 835, and yet it's 60% more power efficient than the GPU in the Snapdragon uh, 850. And why is this important? Why have they doubled up the speed of that? Because people do play games on their laptops and so they don't want to have a laptop experience that's just people waiting to read their email or post something to social media it wants to behave just like every other laptop and that means they had to improve the gpu and they've done that they've doubled the performance compared to the previous generation they've made it more power efficient and then they've stuck it inside of a laptop and the way they've done that is really quite interesting it's double the size in number of transistors that the gpu is twice the size in terms of transistors it's got double the memory bandwidth of course that's really really important of course because you're getting all those 3d models all that triangle information that needs to go back and forth from the main memory and so they've widened that pathway to get that data into the gpu quickly and here's a, a very important thing it supports the latest direct x12 api because here we're dealing with windows so previously on a snapdragon 855 there would be a concentration on the mobile uh, 3d apis but here we're talking about a windows api DirectX 12 and on top of that you've got video encoding and decoding and you've got hdr support and you've also got support for dual 4k external monitors which of course is very very interesting because a lot of people when they come back to their office they will plug in maybe an external monitor into their laptop and they can carry on using it. And being able to support dual 4K monitors is a really, really great from a productivity point of view. When you get to your home, when you get to your office, plug it in, doosh, dual 4K monitors. And then on the CPU side, we've now got the Cryo 495, and this remains an octa-core processor. But unlike the Snapdragon 855, which went for a 1 plus 3 plus 4 setup, where there was a kind of a prime core that had more cache and a higher clock frequency, here what you've basically got is four lots of those prime cores. So higher clock frequencies and a lot of L2 cache and then four power efficiency cores. Now these are based on the Cortex-A76 and the Cortex-A55, built on Cortex technology, which means that Qualcomm are able to tweak them, they're able to make them a slightly different according to their own specifications, and they can rebrand them as a Cryo. And so here it's the fastest Snapdragon CPU core ever. Of course, it's seven nanometers. And here's the thing that a lot of you are talking about in the comments of my videos, 10 megabytes of cache, that's including L2 and L3 cache together. So here for the first time, we really see a serious amount of cache going into a Snapdragon processor, 10 megabytes. So that would be really, really good when it comes to these Windows kind of desktop uh, activities and tasks that you want to do with this new processor. As well as just improving the CPU and the GPU, uh, Qualcomm have made sure that the I.O. is top notch. So here we've got an eight channel access to the memory, much greater than what you get in a smartphone. And there's also support for pro level storage, including uh, NVMe, uh, SSDs and UFS uh, 3.0. That means that both the RAM, 
the kind of the random access memory and the static memory, the flash memory, will work at high speed to kind of get that data flowing around inside of the processor and they've widened up all the paths, which of course costs energy. That's why you don't do it in a smartphone, but by widening it up, they are able to use more uh, bandwidth, but it consumes more battery, but that's okay because you've got a bigger battery inside of a laptop. And then of course, it's very important to mention it has the LTE modem built into it, which means that these are what they call always connected, always on PCs, where you can actually just go wherever you take your mobile phone and you've got connectivity and you can use uh, whatever it is you need to use on the internet. On top of this, you've also got Qualcomm uh, Quick Charge 4 Plus, you've got Qualcomm's uh, audio technology, it supports Alexa, it supports Cortana, it supports USB 3.1, it supports PCI Express, and as I mentioned before, it supports dual 4K HDR monitors. So really everything you'd expect from a laptop. Now you might be asking yourself the question, hold on here, we're talking about Windows on a Qualcomm processor which is based on the ARM chip, not a AMD or an Intel chip using the x86 instructions. How does the software work? How can you take Intel software and put it onto a Snapdragon laptop? Well, the answer is quite simple. First of all, Windows itself, of course, has been ported over to ARM. When I say ported over, in fact, Windows has been running on ARM for absolutely years. If you remember the Surface RT from way back uh, when. So this isn't really an issue for Microsoft. They always keep their platform open, even though actually it may only end up on Intel processors in the marketplace or AMD processors. They actually internally, they always make sure this thing will run on other uh, chips. So it's running on an ARM chip, which means all the DLLs, all of Windows itself, the Windows kernel, the Windows UI is all based on compiled natively for ARM. And then every time you download an app from the Windows Microsoft store, that's already what they call a fat binary. That means it's got the x86 code in it and it's got the ARM code in it and it will use the ARM code so that it can actually run natively on uh, the, uh, the Qualcomm always connected uh, uh, laptop. Now if you do want to install a specific piece of software that's only available for x86, there is emulation. And that basically means if you install it, what happens is as it runs through the program, it will convert it dynamically into uh, ARM code and then run it. And some of there's some caching involved so that it doesn't always do the same translation. Now, of course, that does have a performance hit. So one of the big areas where people were complaining is that things like uh, Firefox, for example, were not available for ARM, Windows on ARM laptops. Well, that's all changing. Now, uh, companies like Firefox are actually making their browsers available for Windows on ARM. So you'll have the full choice of software that you want available on both Intel and ARM PCs, and they'll run at the native performance. That means at the speed of that particular laptop. And of course, it's not just about web browsers. If you look here at this graphic that Qualcomm have provided, they're showing that you know lots and lots of programs, popular important programs, Netflix and Norton and WhatsApp, and of course the Office Suite and so much more is now available natively uh, on Windows on ARM. So there you have it, an exciting chip announcement by Qualcomm, which kind of goes upwards from, mo uh, from mobile smartphones up to the mobile area of laptops while bringing all those benefits of the long battery life. Now at the moment, the existing laptops that exist uh, in these categories using the Snapdragon 835 and the Snapdragon 850 are quite expensive. And that really has been a barrier to people trying it. It is a new technology, it is a new way. We're used to using you know, Intel or AMD uh, laptop. So it's a bit of a risk going down this path, no pun intended, sorry there. So, you know, if I then got to pay loads of money for it as well, then that makes it less of an incentive. Now I'm hoping that with the uh, 8CX, we're gonna see laptops that also come in at a better price point. And when they have that better price point, it means that maybe there's a greater, uh, you know, desire to try it out. The barrier to entry, as they call it, is actually lower. That's really my hope for 2019 to see ARM-based laptops, Windows on ARM, always connected, always on, but at a lower price point. And I really hope we see it. Of course, that is completely up to the manufacturers like Lenovo and HP and so on. It's outside of the control of ARM, it's outside of the control of Microsoft, and it's outside of the control of Qualcomm. So let's really hope that the laptop manufacturers really make uh, good value for money uh, pro, um, laptops with the uh, Qualcomm processor. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. Please subscribe, please share this video, and well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.